Demon possession is very rare today. It was much more common before the incarnation of Christ. The truth is that the worst enemy of a man is the devil. Because of pride, he lost the kingdom of God. And after that, he doesn't want a single one of us to be with God. He wants to destroy every one of us. And as we saw in the Pericope today at the region of the Gadarenes, this poor demon-possessed person lost his personality. And the demons, 6,000 of them, were speaking through him. And they told Christ, if you're going to expel us, they didn't know what Christ was going to do. The devil does not know everything because he's not everywhere. If he's there, he's not here. He's not everywhere like God. But he's extremely fast and anoetic being, and he can discern very quickly what our weaknesses are. Of course, in Christ, he could not find any weakness, any sin, and he knew that he was the Son of God and the closest person to God, although he did not know at the time that Christ was God. This was not revealed to the devil. So if you're going to expel us, let us go to the mountainside into these swine. Why would you think? Because he enjoys evil. He loves to do evil. In Greek, we call him misokalos, the hater of good. Misanthropos, the hater of men. Anthropoktonos, the killer of men. He killed 25% of mankind in the past when he influenced Cain to kill his brother. And this is exactly what he does today. He finds people who are not close to God. When we're not close to God, then he can influence. He finds out what our passions are, what our desires are, and then he begins to throw his thoughts. He cannot read our thoughts. He doesn't have that strength. He cannot read our mind, but he can discern from the way we move, from the way we act. So he finds out very quickly what our weaknesses are. And St. James, the brother of the Lord, whom we celebrate tomorrow, the first bishop of Jerusalem, says, Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your evil desires? Desires for pleasure, for possession, for possession of land, for taking what's your neighbors. That's where wars and fights come from. So behind the evil state of the world today is the devil himself. And how do we remedy that? St. James tells us, become humble because God resists the proud and he gives more grace to those who are humble. We need to humble ourselves to forgive each other and then the devil has no room to act. St. James says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. How do we resist the devil? By being in church, by having a full church like today, by having holy confession, the mysteries of God. By doing that, we expel the energy of the demons from us. But the devil doesn't stop there. If he cannot, and he cannot do anything to us unless he gets permission from God. But along with those characteristics that I mentioned, he's also the great deceiver. He is very deceptive. He loves to deceive, to tell lies. He's a great liar. He influenced the Pharisees to kill Christ. He made them godlier than God, godlier than Christ. He made them so fanatical for the law of Moses that they were blinded and they couldn't see that Christ was healing, healing people with infirmities. He was resurrecting the dead, but they were so blinded, they would say, why did you do this on the Sabbath? You violated the Sabbath. And this is exactly what the demons did to St. Paul, who was in love with his traditions as well. 
St. Paul was deceived by the demons. He thought that he was protecting his faith and he was persecuting the church of God according to the epistle that we read early on today from the epistle of St. Paul to the Galatians. St. Paul, after he saw the light on the road to Damascus, he began to preach Christ crucified. But the fanatical Jews would go after him. They try to kill him. They stone him. They try to drown him. In so many different ways, they try to destroy him because they thought they were defending the law of Moses. So behind all deceptions, behind Judaism today, behind the Muslim faith, is the work of the demons. Because only Christianity has freedom. Only Christ will let you go away from him if you want to. If you want to, you can, go, you can be whatever you want. He will not stop you. But if you're a Muslim, Saudi Arabia, and you become a Christian, you'll be beheaded. If you're a Jew, and you also become a Christian, you will become disowned by your family. A few weeks ago, we were in the pool of Siloam with a priest from Greece and a couple of Serbians. And some of the Jews that were coming up, they spat on us. They spit on our priests in Jerusalem. They have that fanaticism to this day, which shows that their faith is not from Christ. The gospel is the gospel of freedom. Only Christ makes us free people to respect each other's freedom and each other's faith. Want to believe a certain way? I wish that you didn't, but that is your choice. We have freedom in Christ. But the devil doesn't want that. He he wants to enslave us. And the way he enslaves enslaves us is by not being close to God, as St. James says. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, and then God will be with you forever. Amen.